This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. Sorry for that title, but really I had no other way of expressing the bombshell that the good auxiliary bishop from Kazakhstan laid out on the church this week. For those relatively new to the channel, if I say his name on YouTube, our hosts get rather angry at me. We'll call him Bishop Athanasius for brevity's sake. Something about his last name trips something or other in their algorithm, and I don't understand what it is. Regardless, Bishop Athanasius is the bane of all those who want to convince you that the SSPX are somehow in schism, despite the fact that Rome has actually never said that about them, and despite the fact that Bishop Athanasius observed the SSPX for Rome in an official capacity for two years and came away saying that they were fully Catholic and in communion with Rome. That's not good enough for the talking head gatekeepers of Catholic media and a handful of the bishops, but it's the truth. And now the good bishop has some thoughts about the SSPX, but that's not the interesting part. We'll go over what he said about them, but the bombshell he dropped was about set of a contism, and few are talking about that. So let's you and I talk about that. A lot of people have noticed that Bishop Athanasius has been a vocal supporter of the Society of St. Pius X and has combated the notion that they are not fully Catholic. There's a weird term invented by the modernists to describe them, being in partial communion, whatever that means. The Vatican has never applied that status to them. Rather, they have an irregular canonical status, which essentially means they are in the church but in legal limbo. And until the points of disagreement between the society and the Vatican are sorted out, they will remain in that status. And the points of disagreement are about some statements made in conciliar documents from the Second Vatican Council that you have to do mental gymnastics to make line up with what the church taught before the council. And that's the truth, regardless of what some who dislike tradition have to say about the matter or about the society. And Bishop Athanasius has for years been defending them and advocating for their being given full faculties in a formal manner. LifeSite recently published an article based on an interview the Auxiliary Bishop of Astania, Kazakhstan, gave to an Italian journalist where he laid this all out. And it's a call to action directed by Francis. He's asking Francis to take action, which is interesting in and of itself for a number of reasons. From the article, quote, Bishop Athanasius on Friday reiterated his call for Pope Francis to restore faculties to priests of the Society of St. Pius X, the SSPX, to offer Holy Mass. The bishop expressed his hope that Pope Francis would continue steps towards fuller canonical regularization for the SSPX in a podcast discussion with Aurelio Porfiri, who has co-authored a book on the Mass together with the Kazakhstan bishop. The bishop noted that he has already suggested to the Holy See that the SSPX be given faculties to celebrate the Holy Mass. He pointed out that such a recognition would remove, quote, remorse of conscience that prevents many Catholics from attending Masses offered by the SSPX. Already said the bishop, Francis has given the SSPX two faculties that are very important for pastoral life, the faculties of confession and conditional faculties to celebrate marriages, end quote. Now, at first you may be skeptical that Francis would do anything to regularize the status of the SSPX, but it's worth noting that he did recognize formally some of the faculties that the SSPX have claimed to always have, that is, to hear confessions and witness weddings. Prior to that, as the Archbishop of Buenos Aires, he was on good terms with the local leaders of the SSPX, to such a degree, in fact, that he was considered a conservative upon his elevation to the papacy, cut from a similar cloth as Benedict. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> But that's not all the good that bishop had to say in this interview. The bishops of the church are scared, he says, and he's not wrong. They are scared of the growing traditional movement and what it means for the future of the church. He goes on describing how the bishops are scared of a growth of rigid trads who reject Vatican II. He weirdly dismisses that concern, though in the past he has himself said that there are serious issues with Vatican II that need to be addressed in a serious manner, and that the SSPX's concerns with Vatican II are real and should be taken seriously. But the fact that he dismisses the concern is kind of funny because virtually everyone who's watching this video or listening to this podcast knows that there are plenty of apostolic mass attending Catholics who do, in fact, reject Vatican II in part or in whole. The bishops have every right to be concerned because, let's face it, more and more of the faithful are waking up to the state of the church and its links to Vatican II. We can debate the extent of that all we like. But let's be honest with ourselves, where there is smoke, there's fire, and students of the council know that there are serious issues with what came out of the council. The good bishop from Kazakhstan himself has admitted as much. But that's not all he has said. Here's the bombshell. 
Many people consider Sedevacantists to be schismatics, heretics, virtual Protestants, what have you. Not Bishop Athanasius. He's actually mystified at the Vatican attitude towards the Orthodox and how friendly they are to them, but how they completely dismiss Sedevacantists. Quote, when Porfiry asked the bishop about how the Vatican should deal with Sedevacantists, who generally believe the papacy has been unoccupied or vacant since about the beginning of the Second Vatican Council, the bishop said he believes the Holy See also has the pastoral duty to approach them. The bishop said that ecumenical dialogue with which Vat the Vatican has been very much engaged in with the Orthodox in past decades should, if the Holy See is being consistent, be extended to set of a contest, since they are closer to us than the Orthodox and do not deny any dogma directly, including the dogma of the primacy of the Pope. The bishop suggested that just dealings with a set of a contest must take into account mitigating circumstances. He attributes their stance to the crisis of the Church, which he said authorities of the Holy See have contributed to. He thinks an effort to approach Sedevacantists, however, would be only possible when in Rome, divine providence will grant again strong and courageous Orthodox popes, who proclaim and promote the complete integrity of the Catholic faith, liturgy, and morals. End quote. Where exactly is he wrong in that statement? Maybe the set of a contest or two who are seeing this will bristle a bit at the implications of needing to be approached by Rome and him saying that they, that set of a contest are closer to us than the Orthodox, since he doesn't quite come and say that they're not in schism. But in general, the set of contests don't deny any part of the faith. That's objectively true. They have reasoned that the see is vacant, that there has not been a pope since 1958 or so. Whether that is true or not, whether that's an error of reasoning, needs to be handled by Rome by addressing their concerns, but like with the SSPX, Rome famously refuses to really engage with the questions posed by those who oppose the innovations of Vatican II and its rupture with the history of the Church. It's interesting that the good bishop is saying that at least you can go to the masses of the SSPX, at the very least. This was said in the context of those who want to leave the faith to embrace the errors of the Orthodox due to the many scandals in the Church today. Oddly, I've spoken to some who said that he also sounds almost but not quite like he's saying to not suck it up and go to the new Mass, available at every non-traditional Latin Rite parish in the world, that you can go to the SSPX or even the set of contests for their Masses if you cannot bring yourself to go to the new Mass. He's almost saying that, but not quite. Something to consider here is this. Getting regularization and understanding from the SSPX is going to be a lot easier than getting it from set of a contest, and that's putting it mildly. The SSPX have negotiated and even come back from saying only about 80% of Vatican II is recognizably Catholic to saying something closer to 90% is. And if you're knowledgeable about the SSPX stance on Vatican II, let me know in the comments what that percentage has become over the years. I have a hard time keeping up with it, to be honest with you. The core dilemma for the SSPX is that the stance is described by most priests as recognizing the popes, a Vatican II as popes, but also having imbibed of modernism and gotten drunk on modernism to the point where they have lost their way and are intoxicated from that bad philosophy and bad theology. You would not blindly obey your parents' dictates if they were in a similar material state when they've had too much to drink, and that logic is applied here to the church. It's pretty clear, it's pretty straightforward, and it sort of works. The set of a contest, on the other hand, make a compelling case by pointing out the heresies that each of the post-conciliar popes has appeared to endorse knowingly, and as a consequence, they have lost their office. Their argument is bolstered by various doctors of the church who have said or heavily implied that a pontiff loses his office if he is a formal heretic. Whether that's true or not is for the church to decide, which is kind of the problem, all things considered. And I'm going to give you an example of what that problem is here. The SSPX want to be regularized, but they don't want to surrender the integrity of the faith and are willing to negotiate for clarity's sake because of that desire to be regularized, but they're not willing to budge either on their point. Here's what the f most famous set of a contest had to say about this entire issue with the SSPX, because the set of a contest don't particularly seem to like the Society of St. Pius X all that much, at least some of them. And that figure is the late Father Anthony Cicada, who was brilliant. He had a brilliant mind on matters of theology and the liturgy. He probably wrote the best book on the Novus Ordo Mass. Many non set of a contest traditional theologians admit that it's probably the best book on the origin of the new Mass. Here is his imagined dialogue, though, with a new set of a contest layman who has friends who are attending SSPX Masses and his advice as a priest on how to deal with his friends. His, he focuses here on the indefectibility of the Church, which is a dogma of the faith. Quote, the essential argument against recognize and resist and for set of a contism is based upon ironclad principles of Catholic, 
meaning pre-Vatican II, dogmatic theology, concerning the indefectibility and infallibility of the Church, not just the infallibility of the Roman pontiff alone in rare ex-cathedra pronouncements. I have provided a summary of and application of the teaching in the book The Resisting the Pope, Set of a Contism and Frankenchurch, and again in Section 1 of Set of a Contism, a quick primer. The logical corner to former intelligent SSPXers like your lay friend into is the defecting church. 1. If Vatican II is error and the new laws are evil, as SSPX and recognize and resist firmly insist, and at the same time, and the men who promulgated them somehow still had authority from Christ, the church herself has defected and Christ's promises have failed. Especially, I am with you always. 2. But the faith, tell, the faith tells us that this is impossible. 3. The only alternate solution consonant with the church's infallibility and indefectibility is that the men who promulgated these errors and evils never received authority from Christ in the first place. They defected, not the church herself, and became incapable of being validly chosen as popes or of receiving authority from Jesus Christ. 4. The judgment that the changes were errors and evils is thus implicitly a judgment that those who promulgated them had no authority. In other words, the errors and evils of the officially approved changes is the proof which leads to an unassailable and ironclad verdict. No authority, fake popes. End quote. While it seems to me that there are actually other options available other than the dichotomy presented by Father Cicada, especially since the church before the council did list at least one formal heretic as a pope, I'm not here to debate the SSPX versus Set of Acontis position. I disagree with the final conclusion that Set of Acontis come to, but that's about it. This is rather something you'll have to come to a decision on your own. I know that many of you in the audience are debating that issue yourself. Rather, here, my purpose here is to show you the great divide in the church between so the Set of Acontis position and the SSPX position. The SSPX recognize the authority of the post-conciliar pontiffs. They just reject the errors of the council and the erroneous decisions that those popes have made based on the errors of the council and of modernism and the things that have come since. And the set of acontists don't recognize the conciliar authority figures as holding offices in the church in the first place, at least not offices in the Catholic Church. And that's an enormous difference, and not one to be taken at all that lightly. And while I may disagree with the final conclusions set, set of acontists come to, I don't have any animosity towards them, and I think most of the ones I've encountered are fine Catholics, better, frankly, than many of the clergy we see today, and many of them are better Catholics than I am. The bar is set, though, for them being better than some of our clergy, unfortunately. The only thing with Set of Acontis I ask is not to recruit in my comments or in my social media feeds in general. That's the only thing I ask. Beyond that, I have no issue with Set of Acontis. So what do you think about this? Is Bishop Athanasius correct in his assessment? Is it past time to recognize the validity of the SSPX position by Rome and to stop with this canonical irregularity stuff? What about the bishop's words about set of a contism? Again, did you notice that he's almost telling people to go to Mass with set of a contists rather than the Orthodox? Let me know what you think of this in the comments, please. And if you liked this kind of content, like, subscribe, and please share this video if you can. It really does help especially at a time when our hosts are not recommending my videos to people who are not already subscribed and to many of my subscribers. Thanks, and as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.